Our final speaker for this webinar is going to be Dr. Claire Waterman, Director of the Cell Biology and Physiology Center and Chief of the Laboratory of Cell and Tissue Morphodynamics at the National Heart, Lung and Blood Institute. She will talk on quantitative fluorescent speckle microscopy, a technique pioneered in her lab which allows quantitative analysis of the dynamics of and interactions between proteins within macromolecular assemblies. Welcome, Dr. Waterman. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the opportunity, AAS, to represent the intramural program here at the NIH. And I'm going to tell you about some work over the years on fluorescent speckle microscopy that was developed in my lab in collaboration w with uh, Ted Salmon years ago and some of our applications. So what we're interested in is the dynamic process of cell migration. And here is a, a movie that epitomizes the dynamics of this process. So this is uh, from Paul Martin's lab. Uh, it's a, a wound healing in, in, a, in a zebrafish. And what you see are the, is the fin of the zebrafish and a big wound at the bottom that's been impinged with a needle. And this wound uh, exudes uh, 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 chemokines and, and uh, diffusible molecules that are uh, received by white blood cells flowing through the vein, uh, that are flowing in the, the circulatory system above. And uh, white blood cells adhere to the endothelial cell wall, squeeze through uh, the endothelium, and undergo a directed motion towards the site of this wound. This is a very dynamic process that's mediated by the assembly and disassembly of macromolecular assemblies in specific locations at specific times within these cells uh, so that they have a sense of direction and are doing this uh, when they're asked to and not when they're not asked to. So the, the, the key here, point that I want to make is what a dynamic process cell migration is and how can we study these dynamic processes with a light microscope. So light microscopy uh, is, is the key to studying protein dynamics uh, in living cells in space and time because it's a non-perturbing uh, tool. And as Hari pointed out, uh, these days with uh, multiple uh, uh, colors of fluorescent proteins that have been developed and the ability to tag them onto any molecule of interest, we can study the dynamics of multiple uh, uh, molecules making up uh, cellular machines or cellular macromolecular ensembles, how these uh, machines interact with each other, and how these correlate with the dynamics of, of overall cell behavior. So uh, light microscopy and fluorescent protein tagging afford dynamics and specificity that allow us to understand how inanimate molecules self-assemble into dynamic structures to basically animate life. Uh, so the problem, as has been pointed out, is that light microscopy is limited in its resolution to about a, a, a quarter of the wavelength of light, or about 200 uh, to 250 nanometers. And when these diffraction-limited image regions or point spread functions uh, uh, get close together, uh, you can't resolve them anymore. And this uh, can be pointed out in this uh, uh, example of the actin cytoskeleton that I'm going to be using throughout this talk. So uh, to understand the problem, we see a single, over on the, the right, we see a single actin filament. This is made up of uh, globular actin proteins that are about 8 nanometers. In, in size, these assemble into polymers that are dynamic, assembling and disassembling. And it's the assembly and disassembly and motion of these polymers that animate the cell and drive cell migration. So uh, you can imagine now you take an 8 nanometer uh, fluorescent uh, actin molecule, assemble a string of fluorescent actin molecules, and now uh, uh, when, you, when, you, when this gets uh, assembled into a, a structure, uh, uh, this grayscale image in the bottom right uh, at a high density of filaments, uh, what you're going to see uh, at, in the top uh, left is uh, uh, basically sort of evenly fluorescent label uh, along the leading edge of this migrating cell. The, the problem is if uh, molecules are assembling and disassembling into those actin filaments, we can't see those because uh, basically they're below the limit of resolution of the light microscope and the, the image will just look uh, uh, evenly fluorescent. Uh, in spite of the fact that there are dynamics going on in there. So we've developed this technique of speckle microscopy that allows you to see dynamics of molecules that at the level of the light microscope would look homogeneous if they were uh, labeled evenly with, with the molecules. So we see uh, act, the full actin cytoskeleton labeled with fluorescent phalloidin. Uh, this cell is expressing a very low level of fluorescently labeled actin in a different color. And when that actin uh, uh, assembles into the actin cytoskeleton, you can see that uh, in the, the, the red dots in the, in the lower uh, uh, right, 
uh, a hypothetical fluorophore distribution, when that's imaged with a light microscope, because of the uneven assembly of, of the, 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 the uh, fluorescent uh, subunits with the non-fluorescent subunits, what you end up with are, is a speckled image at the level of the, the light microscope. So that would be the zoomed FSM image and the FSM image. Um, so what good do speckles do you? Well, the speckles, uh, I like to say that a speckle acts as a local probe of biochemistry and physics in a living cell. So each one of those speckles, so now what you're seeing is a speckle microscopy movie of the actin cytoskeleton at the leading edge of a migrating cell. Uh, this is just the leading edge, about 20 by 25 microns, and the, the time clock that you're seeing is minutes and seconds over time. So every single one of those speckles uh, uh, represent the, the change in intensity of those speckles. So they're all sparkling. The change in intensity represents the rate of assembly and disassembly of, of actin monomers into those actin filaments within that tiny diffraction limited region. So every single one of those speckles is encoding a rate of, of binding and disasso dissociation. That's biochemistry. And then the motion of those uh, speckles encodes the, the trajectory, velocity, or even the material properties of the actin cytoskeleton. And that's the physics. Um, you can collect these images with a, 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 a sensitive camera these days on the time scale of about uh, 10 milliseconds, and you can track them with techniques that uh, Hari talked about, fitting point spread functions or estimating the center of point spread functions on the order of about 10 nanometers. The, the uh, information contact tent is massive. Each one of these images has about 50,000 speckles, and over time there's going to be hundreds of thousands of speckles, and if you're a graduate student that was asked to track these by hand, you're going to commit Harry Carey. So uh, in order to uh, overcome this problem, we collaborated with a computer vision scientist, Gowden's Dan user, at, now at Harvard Medical School, who developed image analysis algorithms that allow you to uh, locate each one of those speckles, uh, uh, track the positions of those speckles individually over time, or using a, a, a texture-based tracking to, to track the flow uh, 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 over time to give you a maps of these parameters, motion, speed, uh, assembly and disassembly rates that uh, uh, can give you mechanistic insight uh, into uh, specific problems in cell biology. So this is an example now of a, a, a computational analysis of fluorescent speckle microscopy images. We have actin speckle microscopy uh, uh, and uh, co-expression of a green myosin motor protein in the same cell. Now the, the image below the actin image is not a co-localization of myosin and actin. It's actually a map of the rates of assembly and disassembly of the actin cytoskeleton uh, that was generated by analyzing a movie like I showed you in, in, in the last slide. And then the, the image next to that shows uh, so the red, fast, uh, red is uh, fast assembly and green is fast disassembly. And then the heat map next to it shows the rates of motion. So you have fast motion of the actin cytoskeleton uh, very close to the edge of the cell and then a slower rate a little further back. And by characterizing this in many cells and different cell types, we come up with the, 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 the notion that uh, the actin cytoskeleton is really building two distinct machines in the cell. Uh, at the leading edge of the cell, there's a structure called the lamellipodium, where there's rapid assembly and disassembly juxtaposed spatially and a fast motion of the cytoskeleton. And behind that, where the myosin motors are, are, are uh, organized, uh, there's a slower convergent motion of the actin cytoskeleton that is thought to generate uh, uh, the, the uh, pulling forces uh, uh, associated with, with cell migration. So uh, how, how, how do you do speckle microscopy? So uh, really the key to speckle microscopy is in the specimen. Um, what you need is a very well labeled uh, functional protein. So uh, a brightly labeled uh, functional protein uh, what we've experimented a little bit with uh, multiple GFPs on, 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 in a chain uh, attached to a single uh, protein. Uh, you don't want a non-functional fluorescent protein diffusing, contributing to fluorescent background that de degrade the contrast of these speckles. You need very, very low expression level in order to get this stochastic labeling that gives rise to the speckle. Uh, 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 on the order of about 1% uh, uh, fluorescent labeled. So you need very low expression level of your fluorescent molecule uh, uh, co-expressed uh, with your endogenous unlabeled protein. 
there needs to be a difference in fluorescence intensity between adjacent diffraction limited image regions. So you need high resolution uh, uh, imaging uh, and uh, uh, the stability of these differences in adjacent uh, uh, image regions on the time scale of an image acquisition. So a diffusing molecule, is, which is moving very fast in the cell, is not going to contribute to a speckle. But something that's immobilized in the cytoskeleton on the time scale of uh, 15 to 100 milliseconds will contribute to the intensity in a speckle. So um, this is just an example of how do you get low level of e expression and how does it compare to, to uh, uh, the total level of protein. This is a, a, a fluorescent uh, vinculin expressed uh, in the adhesion uh, complexes of, of a migrating cell. And on the right, uh, the right shows the, the low level expression driven by a crippled CMV promoter, truncated CMV promoter. And the, the left shows the image of the, the endogenous vinculin uh, uh, that's uh, imaged by immunofluorescence. So what you see is a very small fraction of, of the actual molecules. But uh, because of this, you can see the dynamics. So uh, what about the hardware requirements? Well, the hardware requirements are, are not any bigger of a deal than just doing really good high resolution microscopy. So uh, uh, you want to prevent photo bleaching because there's very few fluorophores in each speckle. Uh, you, you do that with illumination shutters. You want highly efficient photon collection, a good uh, high quantum efficiency camera, uh, getting uh, extraneous optical elements out of the light path, uh, focus stability, and uh, high magnification and highest resolution possible optics. Um, uh, the thing about speckle microscopy is, is it's really not in the microscope, it's in the specimen. So any mode of fluorescence microscopy uh, that uh, 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 can satisfy these simple hardware requirements is capable of being combined uh, with, with speckle microscopy. And here's just an example, uh, total internal reflection fluorescence uh, combined with speckle microscopy, which allows you to see very high contrast at the, at the surface of the of fluorescence at the surface of the co cover slip. So if you compare the wide field uh, uh, versus the, the turf uh, speckles, what you can see is higher contrast of the speckles uh, because of the, the, the ability of turf microscopy to give you a higher contrast image at that specific uh, region of, of the specimen. You can do multicolor speckles, uh, you know, labeling with, with distinct uh, uh, fluorescent proteins on different uh, uh, proteins to see how these interact in cells. And uh, uh, what we did uh, together with the Dan User Lab was develop a way of correlating the dynamics of two differently covered, colored speckles to give us some idea of how these uh, molecules may be interacting in a living cell. So in this example, we have a speckled focal adhesion protein and a speckled uh, actin uh, cytoskeleton. We do dual wavelength total internal reflection uh, speckle microscopy. We track the flow of the actin and adhesion speckles. Uh, uh, and specifically within those uh, adhesions, we, we get a, a, a vector field of, of the flow of those two. And then we, we, uh, we look at the correlation of the direction of the actin movement with the direction of the focal adhesion molecules uh, as some indication of whether these motions are coupled or not. And this is just an example of that uh, technology where we see the, the, the adhesion protein vinculin, uh, the, the cytoskeleton protein actin, and color encoded on the right is the result of computational analysis, two vector fields uh, 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 with uh, uh, a correlated uh, direction being encoded in red. So vinculin it has hot spots of moving in the same direction of actin across these uh, focal adhesions, indicating that these might have some kind of transient coupling between these two molecules in, in living cells. So where are we going with this technology? Um, uh, right now, we, we measure rates of assembly or disassembly. We don't know absolute numbers of molecules. So absolute n numbers of molecules that are being assembled and disassembled into the cytoskeleton would be a, a, a great step forward. Um, uh, we want other people to use this technology, uh, looking at other uh, interesting uh, structures in the cells. Uh, 3D is a direction that would be very important. Uh, this would rely on uh, combining speckle microscopy with probably with 3D super resolution technologies that allow uh, 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 shortening the point spread function along the, the z-axis and allowing that, that high contrast between adjacent diffraction limited regions along the z-axis. So uh, I'd like to thank my lab members and my great collaborators over the year that have uh, contributed to my ability to, to, to do this work that I tell you about today. 
Great, thank you so much, Dr. Borderman. Um, and thank you to all of our speakers for the excellent presentations.